Dear Hello Games, Hi, it's me, Austin! Fuck you! <laughs> just kidding. No, I'm not writing you today to rip your asshole out through your teeth about your newest game, No Man's Sky, even though it does seem to be devoid of a lot of features that you promised it would have. The game initially ran like ass on even excellent PCs, or your insistence that I exit out and restart my goddamn game every time I tweak a graphic setting like it's goddamn 2006 or some bullshit, or that some of your buttons don't even seem to work. No, Reddit has has that covered pretty well right now with the No Man's Sky subreddit filled with enough tears to create an oceanic planet all of their own. I'm writing to you today because, well, you were foolish enough to make a science fiction game on my watch. You idiots! Don't you know that overanalyzing video games with science is my thing? And you made a space game? Oh, it is on! <laughs> Honestly, fanboy salt mines aside, I'm really, really enjoying No Man's Sky so far, in spite of its infuriating setup and its dropping of frames for no goddamn good reason. I'm sure a large part of this is due to the fact that I didn't follow the development history of the game at all. I knew that it was a space game. That's it! I cut my teeth on the Space Exploration Game Series X way back when, and although I could never get into EVE Online because I have too much self-esteem and not enough free time, I've always found puttering through the vastness of the unknown to be joyfully satisfying. There's something I like about cruising through the emptiness with nothing around me, just floating and contemplating the largeness of the universe or landing on a planet never seen by human eyes before. And this is an experience that your game really, really captures well. Of course, if you don't like the monotony of your brain turning to static as you listen to your new favorite podcast while mindlessly mining ore down to the nub so that you can sell it to buy a new ship, I can see how your game might leave someone feeling hollow inside. No Man's Sky is, on its surface, a game about loneliness in the unknown, and in experiencing an untamed, unpopulated, savage wasteland of the cosmos, which is why, if you stop to think about it for a few seconds, No Man's Sky is complete and utter bullshit. Of course, in order to understand this, we're going to have to go over a few things first. No Man's Sky is an attempt to create a vast experience unlike anything really accomplished before, at least on this scale and with this degree of detail. Huge portions of the game are procedurally generated. Procedural generation is a really old video game technology. It dates all the way back to the ye olde times of games like Rogue and my first online game ever, Diablo. Procedural generation, when applied to video games, is the creation creation of in-game content using math and algorithms as opposed to hand drawing everything. You set up some parameters and limitations, hit enter, and boom! Your game design is done! Okay, well, no, it's not quite that simple, but when applied correctly, procedural generation can create a truly massive and inherently unique experience without the cost of making the development process take 500 years to hand design. All the planets in No Man's Sky are procedurally generated which is a good thing, because Hello Games used a 64-bit seed number to generate their planets. That's 2 to the 64th power, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, times two 64 times! When you follow them all the way down the line, you end up with 1.8 eight quintillion fucking planets. What's more, each planet that's discovered is uploaded to a database so you know immediately if you're the first person to find a place. And the chances are pretty high that you will be. Now, some people have been reporting that it'll take you five billion years to explore every single planet, which is some bullshit. And let's break down why. First of all, they're talking about if you visit every planet for one second. Unfortunately, planets take more than that to discover, since you have to land and then get out of your ship. A planet, upon arriving, takes roughly 30 seconds to land on. If you immediately exit to officially discover it and get back into your ship, that's another 15 seconds. Another 45 to leave, 90 seconds to boost to the next planet, and you have your basic discovery rate for 
one planet. Averaging five planets per system, plus another 90 seconds to jump to the next system, we essentially get a pretty good idea, albeit still a conservative one, of how long it would take for you to explore every single planet and moon in one system and then jump to the next. 16 and a half minutes. Nice. Not too bad. So at this rate, how long would it take you to explore every single system and planet in No Man's Sky? 1.2 trillion years. Well, shit. Since our sun is scheduled to turn to shit in the next 4 billion years, I think you're probably fucked, even if you get bitten by a vampire. Although that being said, the lack of sun would give you a lot more time to hang outside. Anyway, but that's the time it would take for just one person to explore everything. That's bullshit. Humans are inherently amazing when we work together. Be being able to accomplish feats as a group that nobody could ever hope to accomplish by themselves. I mean, hell, did you know that the collective view time for my Pokemon Go video amounts to over 17 fucking years? And that's just in the past month. Humans, when we divide our attention, are capable of accomplishing things in months that it would take one person years to do. So how long would it take us collectively to explore all of No Man's Sky? Well, if No Man's Sky somehow championed its bad press and became the best selling game Game of all time, beating out of all things Wii Sports with over 82 million copies, it would take 1.4 million years to explore every planet. Fuck! Well, that's at least a sizable dent. It would only take into the next biological epic as opposed to the fusion decay of our sun. Cool. But what if every single human being on our planet were elevated from poverty and relieved of responsibility and were able to drop everything they were doing in order to play No Man's Sky? How long then? A mere 15,000 years! Awesome! Hell, that's good news! That means it's entirely likely we could find every planet in No Man's Sky before our species evolves into something else entirely and humanity goes extinct. So, we'll never explore all of it. That's fine. Who gives a shit? That's not really the point. Anyway, the point is moving from place to place and exploring things that nobody has ever seen before. So I think the prospect that we'll never conceivably explore everything is pretty hopeful. It means that around every corner, there will always be something that no other human has seen before. This shouldn't come as a surprise, honestly, because the universe created by Hello Games is actually 1.8 billion percent larger than the most liberal estimates of our home galaxy, the Milky Way. And at the end of the day, whether or not Hello Games delivers on most of their other promises, they have succeeded in giving us a universe that is truly huge and truly unique, albeit you'll probably be mostly doing the same thing from planet to planet. Ah, well. Of course, in an in-game sense, none of this fucking matters because every single fucking planet in the goddamn universe has already been discovered twice over! First, by those little annoying shit fucks known as the Sentinels, which are on almost every single goddamn planet you land on, but also by the three races you'll come across, the Gek, the Corvax, and the Viking fuckheads who were always there no matter where you turn. Hey, hello games, I thought this was supposed to be the wild fucking waste, so why the fuck are people everywhere I look? Okay, maybe I'm being too harsh. I mean, there aren't exactly tons of these aliens everywhere. I mean, yeah, every planet you arrive on totally already has people there, but it's usually like one or two shitheads huddled in a tiny little technological shack. It's not exactly what I'd call a bustling urban society. But still, I mean, 1.8 quintillion planets, all occupied by a handful of people? You know what that means. These aliens? These aliens love to fuck. No, seriously. I mean, from an extremely conservative angle, if there were only 15 aliens on each planet, we're talking about a galactic population of over 276 quin tillion motherfuckers sitting around out there. After being around and doing almost nothing but fuck for over 200,000 years, humans have just barely broken 7 billion. Seeing these aliens everywhere I turn got me asking myself, exactly how old is the universe in No Man's Sky in order to have aliens absolutely everywhere? I mean, if it would take us 75,000 years to explore this universe with in-game technology, how long did it take all of these aliens to go there first? Well, in in order to figure that shit out, we're gonna have to do a lot of math! Well, I mean, I'll have to. You'll just have to sit there and do nothing, lucky 
shitheads. I hope you appreciate this. Let's start with the most basic stuff first. In order to be a species with the resources and intelligence to spread your seed across the cosmos, you need to have a planet with shit in it. You know, shit like iron, uranium, gold, copper, blah, blah, blah. These heavy elements are only created when stars go belly up. As a star starts to burn through its hydrogen supplies, it eventually collapses. The incredible pressures and heats created when the star collapses fuses elements together into heavier metal. This is the only known way that anything we use on a daily basis could possibly exist. When these stars explode, they spread their love stuff across the cosmos. Eventually, it collects in new areas as brand new solar systems form. This means in order to have a sentient, spacefaring species, there first must be one entire generation of stars that go through an entire life cycle. There's no exact number on how old a universe would need to be in order for this to happen, but ballpark it would take roughly nine billion years from the first Big Bang for there to be enough heavy metals lovingly distributed throughout the universe to form planets sustainable to technologically advanced life. Incidentally, our solar system has existed for 4.6 billion years and the universe is about 14 billion years old, which means that it's entirely possible that we're among the youngest possible intelligent species in the entire universe. This is pretty awesome for us, but it also means our chances for ever meeting another intelligent neighbor is pretty much non-existent, with over a trillion stars in our galaxy alone and the nearest solar system being 4.3 light years away, we're probably not going to be running into any cool alien races anytime soon. But I'm getting off track. Presuming that our Earth is an example of a best case scenario for intelligent, technologically advanced life, and more importantly, is the earliest possible example, how long would it take four separate species to explore this vast, vast expanse? Well, the Sentinels got there first. Nobody knows where they came from, but if their home planet came into being 9 billion years after the Big Bang and after 4.6 billion years, some sort of sentient, human-ish species evolved, created robots to do their bidding, and then the entire plot of the Matrix and or Battlestar Galactica happened, we're looking at a planet that's approximately 13.6 billion years old. Plus a handful of thousands. Now, it's implied that the Sentinels expanded into the universe long before the other species got there. In order to figure some of this out, we're gonna have to look at birth rates, or more accurately, the rate of natural increase. Animals like to fuck. Well, most of them do. When fucking happens, babies happen. Trust me, I have a baby on the way and it didn't appear out of nowhere. Unfortunately, animals also die because we suck at being alive. Cancer, viruses, violence, and our own shitty bodies being shitty at continuing guarantee that at some point we're gonna die. Our brain will shut down, our brain cells will expire due to nutritional deficiencies, and every memory, thought, experience, and emotion we've ever had will melt away into nothingness. When you compare the birth rate to the death rate, you get a number called the rate of natural increase, which is the net growth in population we experience. Usually it's positive, although for the first, well, most of humanity's existence, it was effectively zero. Some growth here, but then a plague would hit and we'd all be back to square one. It wasn't until the industrial revolution and the advent of modernized medicine and science that the death rate started to decrease. The birth rate remained the same, however, for a while, so there was a huge boom to our population. It eventually stabilized a bit. Now, the rate of natural increase isn't the same across the planet by any means, but at the most aggressive, it was 0.2%. Even at peak fucking and not dying rate, we actually spread pretty damn slow for the most part. So let's say that tomorrow we invent robots that do our bidding. Well, other than Roombas. Real ones. And let's say they begin to replace us and subjugate us because they are the next step in evolution and are superior in every conceivable way, blah, blah, blah. They surpass us and start heading toward the stars in 500 years. Well, given a growth rate of 0.2%, at that point, the sentinel population would be 20 billion. Given that they're robots and don't need to stay behind, if all of them went out at once in their first year, they would explore over 38 quadrillion planets. Holy shit! Nice work! And if they kept manufacturing more exploration robots at the same rate of 0.2%, it would take them a surprisingly short 3,089 years to explore and settle the entire No Man's Sky universe. Fucking 
awesome! And since technological advances happen relatively quickly in the scope of hundreds of years, this means that the other species in the galaxy would be relatively close behind them if they began exploring immediately after the Sentinels finished occupying the universe. Given that each species only occupies a third of the available space, it would only take an additional 2,887 years, given that 50% of the species is reserved aside to, you know, live their lives and fucking shit, for the Gek, Corvax, and Viking to be in place. That's amazing! That means while this universe is frighteningly well occupied, it's actually pretty feasible, given enough time. So while it's clear that us, as the unnamed explorer in the vast wasteland, are newcomers to the scene, this universe we're experiencing could be as young as 13 billion six hundred million thirty seven thousand four hundred and seventy six years old awesome of course well it's not this young at all and this ultimately is the crux of our little universe the secret story and the terrifying truth about existence the inevitability of non-existence No matter how you slice it, whether it's being a puny mortal who lives at best 150 tiny insignificant years, or an intelligent robot conglomerate to which time has no real meaning, in the end, you must end. The first sign that something is off is seemingly innocuous. Plutonium. Plutonium is fucking everywhere in No Man's Sky. It's one of the most plentiful elements in the entire game, aside from iron. By contrast, in our comparatively young universe, plutonium is incredibly rare. Most of it is man-made, although it exists in very small amounts in uranium ore. The formation of plutonium is a bit complicated, but ultimately it's brought into existence by the same way all heavy elements are. The death of stars. Plutonium is believed to actually be created this way as well, but the problem is that many of its isotopes have a really short half-life, so by the time we started looking around for radioactive materials, almost all the plutonium had decayed into something else. Shucks. That being said, plutonium is still pretty uncommon, so in order for it to be abundant, a lot of stars would have to be kicking the bucket, so that enough long-lived isotopes of plutonium could be present for you to harvest, which brings us to piece of evidence number two, the size of the universe. You see, while Hello Games create a universe that is literally a billion percent the size of our galaxy, cosmically it's, well, pretty damn small. In fact, No Man's Sky is one one hundred thousandth the size of our universe when it comes to planets and solar systems. Where's the rest of this universe? Inert matter floating out in the distance, cold hunks of rock, husks of planets that used to be, cold, dead stars that long ago stopped being anything useful. You see, while it's possible that a space like this could be a mere 13.6 billion years old, No Man's Sky is way, way older than this. Tredecillions of years old. This universe is a universe on the cusp of heat death, being a mere handful of trillions of years away from complete and utter entropic death. And this makes total and complete sense. It's why the Sentinels are so protective over resources. It's not about altruism and preserving innocent species, blah, blah, blah. No, it's to prevent you, a selfish little shit with no sense of scope, scale, or consequence from accelerating the obliteration of all known energy in the universe by selfishly burning through everything you can get your hands on. You, the Sentinels, the Corvax, everybody, this isn't a game about survival. Survival. This is a game about prolonging the inevitable, about keeping the persistent claw of entropy at bay a little longer, about asserting your own existence before ultimately everything goes cold and the universe is left hanging there, a boring hunk of iron with no purpose other than to be forged into a giant hammer for the god Thor before he marches onto the fields of Valhalla to fight the ice giants. Life is meaningless and we all die alone. Thanks, No Man's Sky. Sincerely, Austin. P.S. Do you need more science in your life? More than I can offer? Then you absolutely, positively need to check out Wendy Zuckerman's podcast, Science Versus, which is a show about putting all sorts of cultural values and beliefs and preconceptions to the test of actual data. Or data. Whatever. Datum. Things like gun control, fracking, and parenting. It's awesome. Seriously, it's one of my favorite shows right now. Wendy is a huge 
dork, but the show is incredibly smart and is easily one of the best things on the internet right now. You can check it out at GimletMedia.com or look it up on iTunes or any other place you find your podcast. This is not an ad. We have no ad this week. I just, we're not getting paid for this. You just really should check this show out. It's incredible. Also, Wendy has an Australian accent and it's adorable and I've just outed my crush to the entire internet. Yay. Also, yeah, did you watch my stream last week? I only streamed one day because Tuesday I went to the emergency room with esophageal spasms. Shit felt like a heart attack. Anyway, I'm better now and I'll be streaming Monday and Wednesday and Thursday this week at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Normally it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but I have an appointment on Tuesday. I'll be out of town. I won't be able to be there on Tuesday, so I'll be on Thursday instead. Today is going to be Overwatch, Wednesday is going to be Fallout, and Thursday we're going to explore the vastness of the universe in No Man's Sky. Come check me out at twitch.tv slash shoddycast and I will see you later. Thank you everyone for watching my video about it's no Man's Sky. I don't have a lot of time. It's one of the longest scripts I've ever written, so I want to say thank you to our Patreon supporters who make this show possible. You guys are awesome. If you have any other questions about science for video games, let me know in the questions, comments, what your columns in the belows, the doobly-doo in my pants. I will see you guys next week, and um, yeah, watch my other videos, watch Andrew's videos, do whatever you want to do. You guys are awesome. Ask me your questions. I love talking about video games. I love looking into it, overanalyzing it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. La 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 la.